Hello, everyone. I am Matt Williamson at Williamson NFL. And I want to introduce you to the Cincinnati Bengals on this podcast. Really weird year for them. They never seem to learn. They always start the season under this coaching staff really slow. And I very much believe it's because they don't do anything in the preseason. And this year's a perfect example. They dug themselves a brutal hole. They're, you know, they're four and seven and have a lot of work to do to even be playoff relevant. And I don't think they can get back to that level. I mean, especially if they lose this game. So they already have five conference losses. And I don't think that the Bengals can win the North. So the first tiebreakers conference losses for wildcard games, if the Steelers hand them another, it could be over for Cincinnati which that would be great, but it also could be great on a different level in that the Bengals come here the last game of the season. And if you can eliminate them, you know, will will they have much to play for? You know what I mean? Week 18, all Burroughs ailments and Higgins contracts and things like that. Will they really be super motivated or have everyone active? Who knows? You know, but I think that's a possibility. So here's what's kind of happened with this team. It's first of all, I don't think it's a great coaching staff and I don't think it's a great organization, but they were very fortunate to be the worst team in the league the year that Joe Burrow came out and they did the right thing and picked them. So I also give them credit for in that era or a couple of years ago when, you know, when Burrow was new. The Bengals uncharacteristically went out and spent some money on defense. They went out and got Trey Hendrickson and Mike Hilton and DJ Reader, amongst others, and built themselves a pretty nice defense from other teams' players. And they were able to do that because their offensive studs, Higgins, Chase, Burrow, were on first-year contracts. So they had great production from young, cheap guys. So wisely... They changed their tune the last couple of years, realizing that Chase and Burrow and all these guys are about to become expensive. So we better draft defense heavy. And they have. They've just done it really poorly. They've gotten so little from these last three draft classes or so of high defensive players, highly dra- Miles Murphy, guys like that. So the what has happened is I believe this is one of the absolute best offenses in the league. I think Burrow is having maybe, probably, the best year of any quarterback in the league. Chase is absolutely having the best year of any wide receiver. He's on pace to win the Triple Crown, most receptions, most yardage, most touchdowns. Higgins looks great. Chase Brown looks great. But all the great things they do on offense almost exactly get wiped away by a bad defense. I mean, they're, they're almost they're I've, I've been la- joking all week that they're, they're even Steven, you know, from, from Seinfeld. If you find a dollar on the floor, you lost one in the wash or whatever. I mean, like everything is exactly even except the record, which we'll get to here in a minute. Better lines, the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for online betting from the earliest odds to in lay in game live betting. Bet Online provides you with all the action and ability to watch the games as they happen, with the largest selection of odds on everything from football, NBA and college basketball, NHL, to UFC, MMA, they got it all. Head to Bet Online today and get on the action with America's most trusted site for online wagering. Bet Online, the game starts here. Since Burrow has been a Bengal, he's only played the Steelers five times. Injuries, etc. He's three and two in those games. Burrow has beaten the Steelers three out three out of five. And one of those losses, if you remember, he was knocked out of the game. So in games he's finished, started and finished, he's four and one against the Steelers. But man, the Steelers dominate this series history. 70 to 39. Cincinnati's only won. 13 
of the 50 games they've played between these division rivals in the 2000s. Mike Tomlin's 26 and 11 against Cincinnati. Brutal. Brutal. Um, all right. So let's get back to kind of some general information about this game. As I told you, the Bengals are even Steven. They've outscored their opponents by one point this year, despite being four and seven. Pittsburgh is a plus 66 point differential. The Steelers' three losses have come by a total of 11 points. The Bengals had a 20-point loss against the Eagles in Week 8, but every other loss has been a one-score game, eight points or less. But they're 1-6 in in one-score games. Like, the, the analytic nerds will tell you, oh, that'll get back to 500. You know, yeah, it might, but, I mean, brutal. And how about this, though? This is what's a little disheartening from a Bengals perspective is they have four wins, right? But the combined record of those four teams that they beat right now is 10 and 34. So, yeah, they're beating the bad teams. They're losing close games to the average teams. And thus four and seven. But it's been a tough year considering how well Burrow and company have played. Steelers have a plus 13 turnover differential compared to plus one for Cincinnati. Steelers have 22 takeaways. They've recovered 10 fumbles. They've only turned the ball over nine times and have only thrown three interceptions. Since he's only thrown four, though. But Burrow has turned the ball over against the Steelers in his career. So after possessing the ball for 3502 against the Browns, they're now up to 3250. They were 3502. Now they're up to 3250, which leads the league. Uh, they averaged 3551 over their past three games and 3341 time of possession on the road. Since he's been good lately, though, 3339 over their last three games and 2930 on average. Even though they throw a ton, they do possess the football, they get first downs, etc. But this is like the stat that sums up Cincinnati perfectly to me. They produce 0.9 more yards per game than they allow. Just a smidge under one. So they're plus one in point differential. And yards per game differential, they're basically plus one. Like as even Steven as you can get. The Bengals average four yards a carry. Steelers are only at 3-9. Only the Raiders and Cowboys are below 3-9. But the Steelers' defense allows just 4.0 yards per carry. Only four defenses are better, where the Bengals allow 4-4, which is me mediocre at best. But unlike some of the, you know, the, the Ravens, the Cardinals are the only team with fewer accepted penalties this year than Cincinnati. And the Bengals' 414 penalty yards this year are the fewest in the season, uh, in the entire year. Starting field position has been awesome for the Steelers. And so much of that is turnovers and special teams, of course. But the average offensive drive for the Steelers starts on their own 32.2 yard line. That's the league's third best. The average starting defensive drive begins on the 27.3. So more or less, every Steelers game, the opponent is starting every drive five yards deeper than the Steelers do. Over the course of the year, that's a lot of yardage, a lot of hidden yardage. Strangely, the Saints are the only team better in terms of that differential. Steelers defense is allowed the fewest rushing yards to opposing quarterbacks. And Burrow runs much better than you think. He, he buys time in the pocket much better than you might think. He's a very smart runner. He's a much better athlete than given credit for. But when quarterbacks scramble and run, they do nothing against the Steelers. We talked about that earlier in the week. On the other hand, and maybe this makes more Justin Fields sense. I didn't know this when we had this conversation earlier. Cincinnati allows the most rushing yards to opposing quarterback. And it's f over 100 more than the second worst team. So not only are they getting gouged by quarterbacks, but whoever 31 is, 
They're thirty second by a mile. This is kind of crazy. At halftime, on average, Pittsburgh's losing by one point four points. Okay, Cincinnati's winning by point one. Again, even Steven. <coughs> but in the second half of games, the Steelers outscore their opponents by seven point four points per per in that half, while the Bengals outscore their opponents by point two. But this is what's insane: the average Bengals game has 30.6 points in the second half. So what happens is Burrow gets a bead on the defense and gets hot when it matters most, and his defense is horrendous. So teams come out of Bengals games time and time again, maybe it's 0-0 at the half and ends up 30-28. to But they come out at the half, and it's just score, 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 score. Wouldn't shock me at all if that game goes this way, too. It's just a Bengals thing. This is an odd one, too. Since he's given up 95 points in the second quarter and 105 in the fourth quarter. So that's 22 points in the closing quarters of each half. 200 total. Steelers have only given up 186 points all year. (laughs) See what I'm saying? It's going to be a crazy one. We're going to dig into this thing heavier. Um, I'll try to get, I guess, one more before Thanksgiving. And that might be it before kickoff. So I'll have to figure out the logistics of that. But over and out, everyone. Take care.